What is going on, Badger fans? Um, live reaction show talking about the Wisconsin Badgers Dayton Flyers game. What we saw, what we liked, what we didn't like. Is Connor Segan the best? Is Segan the best player on the team right now? Question mark. Um, obviously, I'm kind of kidding, but kind of maybe not. We're going to talk about all that and more. Get to your comments. Talk about the game uh, on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Uh, let's bring Rajiv in because he's here. Justin may or may not dial in. I think Justin said he's heading to the gym to blow off some, some steam. Um, that <laughs> offensive... Offensive performance did not exactly lend itself to uh, a happy Justin, maybe. First of all, yeah, everyone tuning in, listening on the show, appreciate it. Um, I apologize. We started a little later. Uh, I had a furnace guy come and fix some stuff, and he didn't quite show up quite on time. But uh, Rajiv, man, listen, let's just start here. Like a win's a win. Nobody cares several months from now if it was an ugly win. Um, so it is a good resume builder for the Badgers. It's a huge resume builder. I mean, look, we're, we're going to play Kansas tomorrow too, which is another big thing. This game was ugly. It was really, really ugly. You know, we, we talk about how we don't want to have stretches where we have bad offense, and we had it today. So some of the things I didn't like, we'll start there for me. Um, I thought Chucky Hepburn had a rough game, and not only in his production, in his approach to the game. I thought his, his head was just down the second half. He just he, he didn't have it. He wasn't putting in the energy and the effort, and that was pretty noticeable. And when your leader does that, it puts a lot of pressure on everybody else in that lineup. I give credit to Tyler. When he came back in after getting his fourth off, he went off. He got more aggressive. He started a little couple ball fakes, made, made a bucket. He obviously wasn't very productive either, but I like the fact that he came in there and he wasn't afraid to do it. I think Chucky wouldn't take a shot. I mean, he, he was, he was gun shy at the end, and he needs to be that leader. So that was – that was kind of bad, but obviously the good first half, let's talk about Connor CG. And I mean, my goodness, the guy was playing well, shooting well. No, he's not the best player on the team yet, but he did need to be in there in the last five minutes. Why was he not in there? You can't tell me that Jordan mm -hmm. Davis and Max Klesman should have been in there more than a CG. Thank you. When, when we needed that late bucket, he would have been great to have in there. If nothing else than to, to be a, you know, a decoy or something. I mean, he, Everyone knows he's the best shooter on the floor. Why is he not in there? He needed to be in there. But, and I'll end with this for now, a win is a win. Dayton mm -hmm. is, a, is pretty much going to be a ranked team most of the year. They're a good team. Like we said um, on the earlier show today, they returned five starters, seven of their top eight scores. They're deep. We did a great job defensively. We got the win. Go Badgers. Ton of great points. I want to start with Chucky because um, one of the things I put in the Discord, I didn't like his body language. And you you mentioned his head was down. There was a play he tried to feed uh, Hodges, like kind of wrap around pass, bounced it to him. Hodges wasn't quite ready, fumbled it away. It wasn't an easy pass. And then Hepburn just kind of did this thing, like shrugged, shrugged his shoulders at him and did this thing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's like when the the, the pitcher, you know, blasts one of his outfielders for missing a tough play. Like you're the point guard of the team. Hodges is coming off the bench. He's young. And you didn't give him a great feed. You you go build him up, especially when you are one of ten on the day and you have four other turnovers. Like I thought, Hepburn played really poorly, like you said. But I thought his body language in in particular wasn't very good, and that's that's a big deal for the point guard of, of your team. That's for the leader. He has, team. he has to be a leader, and he wasn't today. And yeah, his his sort of general attitude was sort was perm kind of permeating through the team. And I thought, mm -hmm. look, I think we got a lucky win. I mean, our defense. Our defense did well. Their really poor shooting saved us. And, you know, I mean, but, but Chucky's got to be better than that. Yeah, and the other thing with Hepburn, too, and I've kind of said this. I've said this before. So people people thought he was going to take this huge step offensively. And I said, listen, this is not an elite athlete. And this is I, I promise this is not a cross Chucky Hepburn show. I still right. like Chucky Hepburn. Um, but what I've said is he's going to struggle finishing at the rim because he's not a great athlete. He's not. Um, a six foot five guy. And last year, those really athletic defenders, they were guarding Johnny Davis. Now those dudes are guarding Chucky Hepburn and he's, it's, it's going to be a struggle for him. And we're seeing that adjustment and there's, there's bumps in the road with it. But where I think 
even on the days where he shoots poorly, I think we need to see him continue to be aggressive, not pass up shots, and then that body language and just find other people open looks. I don't think he did a great job of those things today. Um, and then I want to get to your second point with Asijin. Uh, I thought guard got stubborn. I really did down the down the stretch. Uh, I get that Davis is a better defender. He's stronger. He's been in the program longer. But at some point, and I wrote it down here, I'm, listen to this, with 59 seconds left in the game, the Badgers clinging to a one-point lead, okay? Their lineup was Crowell, who was 3 for 10, Davis, who was 1 for 7, Hepburn, who was 1 for 10, Wall, who was 1 for 8, Klesman, who was 1 for 5. The lineup on the floor was 7 of 40 for the Badgers. Meanwhile, Isigen's on, Isigen's on the bench. He was, he's 3 of 6 on the day. You have to get him out there and let him live through some of the rookie mistakes because he's the best offensive spark plug you have right now. I mean, is there anyone else that we wanted shooting that shot at the end of the game? We, we needed him. To shoot. Everybody wanted him in there. Why would he not be in there? I mean, Klesman didn't do – Klesman, first of all, let's give him credit. What a block, by the way. Yes. On the last defense true. play. He deserves a lot of credit for that. But, I mean, no, he's got to be in there. And he's – if nothing else – you know, he's a decoy. He's another player they have to defend. He gives the defense something to think about, which we talk about all the time. Yeah, he had a great first half. He's so aggressive shooting. I love it. We talked about it in nausea. Mr. Indiana, get him in the game. We got we got to do it. And, and we're going to need that. That This, this situation is going to come up again. Yeah, we're, We need a bucket late in the game, and he needs to be in that rotation. I understand if he's not a starter right now. That's fine. But key moments, you got to have the guy who's shooting the best, period. And that might not be, listen, this, this game is a microcosm or not. A, this may not be a microcosm of the season is what I'm saying. This game though, when nobody else is shooting well, like it's different in, if we're playing in three weeks and Chucky Hepburn's five of 10 and Tyler Wall's seven, 11 and Crowell's hitting his threes, then maybe you don't need a siege out there and you play more defense. Right. But in a game like this, where nobody's hitting shots, I, I just felt like guard tightened up a little bit and the drop off between uh, Jordan Davis to a siege defensively is not as big as the drop-off from Siege to Jordan Davis offensively, if you know what I mean. Yep. Like, he more than makes yep. up for that. And you use decoy, the word I've used is gravity. Like, he provides gravity to offense where the defense is drawn to him, and it opens everything up. Um, yep. So we're on the same page there. Probably enough said on that one. Um, I, I do want to point out, once again, the defense, and you brought it up with the block to Klesmit. The, the perimeter defense remains. They are so connected. They move so well. They create a ton of tough shots. Now, Dayton missed some open ones, but – once again, it's not just bad luck that other teams are shooting poorly against the Badgers. Yeah, totally. I mean, and that's always that's been the strength of our team for a long time. They did it again today. I also want to point out just overall the bench. You know, they scored over half our points, 24 points from the bench tonight. Let's give uh, Isaac Lindsay some credit. You know, yeah. we yesterday earlier today, I guess, in the show, we talked about Kamari McGee and how we expect him to come up. But, you know, with Hepburn not playing well, I thought Isaac Lindsay did an admirable job at the point. He played mm-hmm. well. He, he hit uh, five points, one of two from the three-point line. I mean, that's that's what we need out of him, and I think he deserves credit. I thought he played really well. I like to see that production off the bench. Uh, in a game where our two stars clearly were just not on it, we needed people to step up. Bench scores 24 points. That's yeah. how you win yeah. games. That's how you win games. How, how funny was it, by the way, that Ilver hit a couple threes and then went Reggie Miller? Right, like Ilver just started like launching. Um, but to be fair, he was open for most of them, though. I mean, at least they they weren't yeah. they were well. Some a couple of them were not so. I good, would say yeah. one of them definitely he wasn't. He pulled up from like thirty with somebody in his face and just was like, "Let it rain, baby," because I don't get a lot of minutes. And I gotta be honest, well, he I, shot fifty percent. He shot fifty percent. I was just gonna say, I gotta be honest, I kind of like it. Like I kind of you need some just guys who are, will go out there without a conscience, whether they deserve it or not, right? Whether they burned it or not. Um, I kind of like it. Coming up next, we're going to get to uh, all the user comments we see. We're going to talk about some of what you're saying on the, on the show. Again, this is a live reaction show, Wisconsin Dayton. It's not going to go as long as football reaction shows because there's a lot more basketball to go around, but I want to do a quick one after every show. So think like two segments is what we're going to do. A bunch of really interesting comments coming up, though. We're going to talk about that next on Locked On Badgers. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. Um, once again, LinkedIn remains your number one source for all of your, your hiring, um, everything you're trying to do. Really, as a corporation to bring new people in, LinkedIn is your number one source for that. Great tools to screen out applicants who, who don't deserve to be there. They're not going to waste their time. They're not going to waste your time. It's win-win, you know, and you can't afford to bring in bad people. And it's hard to get rid of them. It's hard to find them. Hard to find good ones. It's hard to get rid of bad ones. So, you know, every every opportunity to hire, use LinkedIn. It's the largest professional network in the world. We use it at our company. I've used it. I've used it just to make professional contacts to kind of grow 
um, on my my IT job because that's that's kind of my day job to grow that portion of, of who I am. I've met a lot of great people through that network. Um, and there's a reason small businesses rate LinkedIn as the number one uh, place for delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for rate at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free terms and conditions to apply. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Lockdown Badgers. Bring Rajiv back in. We're talking Wisconsin Dayton. And I do want to remind everybody to hit the subscribe button if you like the show. We are competing with the Gophers this week. Let's get more subscribers than them. Again, I'm going to pound it this week, and then I, I'm going to back off of it. So do it this week. Let's beat the Gophers. Um, let's take some user comments. Let, let's see what people are talking about, then we'll wrap up up here. Go to the top here. The Candyman says, uh, Connor Asijan is uh, is him. Yeah. You can't really argue with that right now. I mean, the guy was – I mean, he was uh, three of five, I think, from three, I believe. Uh, two of four. I mean, he had 13 points. I mean, look, he's, he's, we've said it before. I'll say it again. He's not afraid to take shots mm -hmm. and that's what we want. We, you know, I think someone else put in the comments that Chucky looks a little timid right now and they're absolutely right. And, you know, we, we need someone who's not going to be timid. Who's going to take those shots and guy, he's a pretty good shooter. So let's go. Let's also point out the fact that the Badgers may get buried in this game. If, you know, if Connor isn't hitting their 11 of the first 13 points when they had nothing else going, like he, he kept them in this game to the point where then they could kind of find their footing. Otherwise, I don't know if we would have scored more than 10 points in the first half. So yeah. Yeah. Candy man. Thank you for the comment. Uh, Brian latched. We are guard said we are wound too tight. We are, we were wound too tight at times getting out of the system. Um, it did feel like we got mechanical offensively. Um, I don't know if that was actually a comment from guard. I didn't see it. But, yeah, it did feel like we were a little too mechanical at times. Uh, Zach Bartz, not sure who needs <laughs> offense more for basketball or football. <laughs> yes. Yikes. Well, at least we can say that both teams have great defenses. There we go. Let's let's celebrate the defense. Yes. That's, that's a wonderful, wonderful point. Uh, Honey Banana, and just continue on with this. By the way, thank you, everyone, for the comments. You know, this defense is elite and will carry us a long way. I actually had a note on that. I think this defense – it's so weird because we're four we're four games in, right? This is still short sample size, but teams are shooting incredibly poorly against us from three. I mean, we lead the country. People, we talked about it on our, our previous show. I did. We lead the country in three point defense. Dayton shot fourteen percent today. Um, some of that is luck. No, no, you will not go through the season holding teams to fourteen percent from three. But yeah, some of that I agree with Honey Banana, and I agree with you, Rajiv. The defense is elite. I mean, you know, yeah, we've got we we got to pressure the, the three point line. We did a good job of that tonight. And no, it's not it's not all defense. A lot of it's luck. I mean, they they missed open threes just like we did tonight, and that has nothing to do with defense. But I mean, you know, we've got to give the credit where the credit is due, and we definitely made some we made top shots tougher for them. We're really good about you know, and I, I want to also bring about the defense. I want to bring up the defense down low too. Um, you know, Holmes, their best player, averaged 13 points a game. He, he got nine tonight, but we really, we, we denied him positions in the first half. Mm -hmm. He didn't really get good looks at all. He, well, he likes to play on the block. He likes to be down there low and he's very effective. And just like what UNLV did to them, we denied the ball. We didn't let him get in the right positions. We doubled down a couple times. That was really good. And I think overall the defense played really well in that regard. So credit also in, in how we played in the lane. Yep. And Brian Latch, the same thing. Defense is our calling card. Um, Jordan Love, again, everyone's piling on this. Uh, need to hire a new offensive coordinator for the basketball team, too. Uh, CS, this is what you referenced, Rajiv. Chucky needs to find kind of that fire confidence that Connor has. Chucky looks very timid right now as a playmaker, but especially a shooter. We go as Chucky goes this year, especially as Big Ten play begins. Yeah, listen, this team is not going to go a long ways if this is the version of Chucky we get. I mean, even if Listen, this, we're, even if we get a slightly better version of this Chucky, it's not going to go a long ways. But I would say that they're different players. Like, Chucky is not going to be – he doesn't have the the elite skills of a one-on-one of -on -one score. So he needs to play more than all-around game set of shots. And he can't just let the misses get to him like he did in today's game, I think. Yeah, you know, I think some of the timidness also – it's not just about the shooting. It's also about how he kind of stopped driving in the second half too. And he needs to drive, he needs to drive and dish, drive and get fouled, you know, make some plays. He has to be able to make plays when it matters because he is our top guy. He is our leader. And, you know, he touched the ball more than anyone else on the floor. So, yeah, I would certainly like to see him get rid of some of that timidness. Adam Hill says, what am I missing with Crowell? He doesn't do anything well. Uh, Rajiv, yes or no? 
No, the Crowell can be better, but Crowell does plenty well. And, you know, yes, is his execution great all the time? No. Could he be better? Yes. He didn't shoot the ball. He was 0 for 4 from 3 today. But I admire the fact that he takes them. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's in good positions. He gets to the top of the key a lot and shoots. Had a couple key rebounds. He made mistakes today, no doubt. But, you know, he's 7 feet, and that's we need a 7-footer on that team. We don't have another number 5. So, I think, you know, he's an important player, and I think he's going to continue getting better. I'm not off any kind of crowd train yet. Um, you know, he's an important part of the team, and we're going to need him to do well. I think this is kind of who, who I thought he would be, right? Like, he's he's not a great scorer, um, but he is a pick-and-pop guy. I like that he shoots it. That's important, by the way. A defense will respect people who, who do shoot it. Like, they will, you know, that does create some gravity as well. And he had a couple nice post moves in the second half where the Badgers were really struggling for shots. He had a couple post shots that I thought were really important. A couple offensive rebounds as well. Um, offensive rebounding in general kind of kept the Badgers alive today. They out, actually out-rebounded Dayton, I believe, on the offensive glass, which is a big deal considering how big Dayton was. So I don't think he's terrible, certainly. Um, you want to you want to see him hit some of those spacing shots for sure. Um, and I Jordan also want to see him be a little bit more aggressive on the block. I mean, he, he had a couple of good post moves. He had a couple of little hook shots. Do more of that. I mean, he's seven feet tall. Like, be a little bit more um, aggressive down there. But I will say, when he did get that um, that look, that was a great find. I think it was Hepper that passed him the ball in that last play. Go up strong. Or right. ball fake or something. I mean, it, it, give Dayton's defense a lot of credit. They Their guys are tall. We talked about it on an earlier show. You know, they have a lot of height, but you got to go up strong. You got to go up strong. You're seven feet tall. Go up there and dunk that thing, man. Yeah. And you got to break a wrist, right? That's what Shaq always talks about. If someone goes up there to stop you on a dunk, you break their wrist. Um, and that was a huge moment in the game, right? That that doesn't put it away, but it, you make that. You, you go up three potentially. Um, that's, that's a big shot right there. Uh, Max Farron, again, thank you everyone for the comments. Lindsay and Ilver looked really good for the most part. They were on the floor. Very pleasant surprise. Yeah, I, I, I'm i kind of intrigued by Ilver, right? Like, that's a pretty smooth stroke for, for a, a, you know, a guy who could play maybe even the four and the five against some teams. I would like to see more burn from him, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I was it was good to see him in there. Obviously, Wall was in foul trouble a lot, and I think that was nice for Ilver to come in. And it's not just Gilmore, you know, coming in there at, at that four position. We're seeing a little Ilver. He shot the ball. He did okay. Uh, but, yeah, like I mentioned, Lindsey already deserves a lot of credit. I thought he came in and, and played well. Yeah. Um, and Jukubi well, needs to play today. He had some injury problems as well. So that's probably partially why you're seeing a little bit more of Lindsey Ilver. Um, that's a guy that normally gets at least five to ten minutes per game. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan Lavera, we talked about this. Ilver got a little trigger happy. <laughs> but, yeah, but the shot looks good. And, again, I would say it's important. If, if, if you are going to come off the bench and be a shooter, it's important to take shots. Otherwise, the defense just doesn't respect you. You create no spacing, no gravity. And he hit a couple threes in a game that we won by one. Like, that that's a big contribution off the bench. So, yeah, I mean, he did get trigger happy. We talked about it, but I liked it. Um, I like this comment here, James Leverance. I'm going to kick it to you, Rajiv. If Wall, Hepburn, and Crowell ever show up, we're going to be incredible. I, I like this comment. I agree because, I mean, today, Wall and Hepburn, you know, were basically not existent. I think they, they combined for five points. Um, when they are playing well, when Wall's getting inside and, and doing what he does on the block and Chucky's making shots and distributing the ball well, now you throw in a Cjian and you throw in Ilver and you throw in and, and I, I, I give credit to Jordan Davis too. He had a couple nice cuts. You know, when he goes, when he gets inside the three-point line, he's very effective. I don't mm-hmm. really like shooting, but yeah, those three guys are playing well. You couple that with what we're, what we're the production we're getting without those three, we can be very special. But Let's make no mistake about it. We cannot shoot 23%, 22% in the three and win a lot of games. This was a defensive struggle. Good thing that, that, that they shot poorly too, and, and we were a part of that. But, yeah, I mean, if those guys are shooting well, we are going to beat teams that we're not expected to beat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. And like, like we said, it, this is just a big res- – get it, move on, put it in the back pocket, get a little better, shoot better. Um, but if you had losses at the buzzer and we go up back to that Klesman block, it would really kind of, you would really hate it, right? Cause this is a game that you would look back when it comes to tournament selection time, having that Dayton win in your back pocket or for Dayton, having a Wisconsin win in their back pocket really matters. Um, I'm going to wrap up here. Cause like I said, I want to keep the basketball reaction shows kind of quick and tight. Um, again, we're going to talk more basketball in our weekly daily shows too. Uh, but Rajiv, any um, last 
thoughts, anything you want to wrap up with? I know I didn't get to everybody's comments, which I apologize for. I, I will try to loop back on them though, but how would you wrap up your thoughts in this show? Or on yeah, this I mean, two two things. First of all, like I said, win is a win. Let's take it. Let's uh, let's see what we have tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a great game against Kansas. I mean, I, I, I don't expect us to win, but I expect us to play hard and put in a good effort. So that's going to be exciting. I want to talk really quickly again about that Klesman block. That is a huge play because we can't foul in that situation. We put them on the line, we basically lose. Mm -hmm. So he had to time that perfectly. He had to make sure he didn't get a foul with the body. Fantastic play. That play basically got the game for us. So tons of credit to him. I, I jumped up out of my chair when I saw that block. Loved it. Yeah, I love it. That's that's a great way to wrap it up. I mean, he he had that block, and I instantly my eyes went right to the clock, and there were like two seconds left, one second on, uh, oh, you know, because you just you're hoping on that block, it like bounces around a little bit, and there's a scrum, and the game's over. Yeah. But what a defensive stand, just in general, right? Because they forced um, Dayton came down, and the Badgers really locked him up, forced a timeout, right? Because obviously Dayton's not wanting to go down to the wire there, because if they miss the shot, the game's over. So they're trying to yeah. get a first look. The Badgers lock him up. Then you have the Klesman block, and then. You know, Dayton can't get a quick action off. That's just three basically individual defensive badger stops there, stacked one on top of each other. Yeah. And we talked about it. the defense is going to have to carry this team. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Rajiv. I didn't know if I'd have him or not. Uh, but we are going to try to do basketball reaction shows basically after every game if we can. They're not going to be long, but I want them to be tight. I want to talk about it, and I want to give everyone the opportunity to discuss it. So appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, another show coming up tomorrow. That'll be a locked over, a locked on crossover with the Gophers guy. We're going to talk more about the X week. Then y'all know we're going live after the Gophers game. So join in on that one. Um, if I don't get the opportunity or if I haven't yet, have an incredible Thanksgiving to everybody. I am thankful for all of you. Uh, thankful for, for guests like Rajiv, obviously. So have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy it. And uh, Rajiv, tons of great comments already. People tell me what a great idea it is to get you on more regularly. So um, I agree there. Um, on Wisconsin. We'll talk later. I uh, appreciate y'all so much.